Now we're going to continue the TP example with velocity and acceleration analysis and discuss how to program that into MATLAB. So we've got here the TP, the vector loop and position equations, and knowns, unknowns input. So to do velocity, we will take the derivative of position and then we'll be able to put it in matrix form and solve for the unknowns. R1 is going to have a dot because the length changes of that. Um, basically, both of the unknowns change. So R1 will have the dot, and then we'll have to use chain rule for the angle derivatives. So now we've got velocity, we need to put it into matrix form. So matrix form is J times theta dot equals B. Now theta dot is just the unknowns, which are R1 dot and theta 3 dot. And then j is going to be their coefficients. So the first part or first row corresponds to x, second row corresponds to y, first column corresponds to r1, second column corresponds to theta 3. So now we look for coefficients. So coefficient of r1 dot in the x equation is just 1. And R1 dot does not show up in the equation, so it's just zero. Now the coefficient of theta 3 dot, we see that one in the x equation. It's negative R3 S3. And then in the y equation, it's R3 C3. So now the B matrix just has everything else, which in this case is the theta two dot stuff because that was the input. And because we move that stuff to the other side of the equals, the sign will change. So this is velocity. Now, there are two or three ways we could actually solve out for these velocity unknowns. So one method is algebraically. So we use that for simple equations when there are zeros in the Jacobian. So that's what we'll use for this problem. Um, the second one is Kramer's rule. So that is when you stack the matrices and find determinants, and that is always works. Um, the third way is MATLAB with matrix math. Um, so we'll do that one when we program. So to solve algebraically, basically we need to rearrange the equations to get theta three dot and R1 dot. Well, R1 dot does not show up in the Y dot equation. The only unknown there is theta three dot, so that'll be the easiest way to get theta three dot. So we just rearrange that. And now that we know theta three dot, we can solve for R1 dot um, by just moving everything else to the other side of the equals in that X dot equation, and then substituting in what we found for theta three dot. Now this right here is a trig identity, sine of theta three minus theta two. So then finally, so here we have solved out for velocity. Now to get acceleration, we take the derivative of the velocity equations, put those in matrix form, and then we can solve. So let's do that. So 
So note here that from the theta dot equations for velocity, we got two different derivatives. We got the theta dot squared and the theta double dot. And that's because we have to use product rule and chain rule because both the angle and the angular velocity can change. So now we need to put these in matrix form. So that will follow the same J theta double dot equals B formula. Now J will be the exact same. Theta dot will become theta double dot and then B will be everything else. So let's fill that out. So now we need to solve for the acceleration unknowns. Now to simplify this, I'm just going to say that the top thing in the B matrix is BA1 and the bottom thing is BA2 so that it will be a lot less to write. So just know that that equals that and that one equals that. So we just need to rearrange and solve. So theta three double dot, if we rearrange, it's going to equal B A two over R three C three. We got that from the y double dot equation and now the x double dot equation for r1 double dot, r1 double dot equals ba1 plus r3 s3 theta3 double dot. But we need to actually substitute in. So now that we've solved for these algebraically, let's program them into MATLAB and get that to calculate it and then plot. 